I have a question for you. What are the two most important public health innovations that allow us to live in our densely populated world? First is access to clean water and sanitation, but the second is vaccines that protect us from transmitted infections. Now imagine you're standing in any major city in the world and there's an outbreak of what we call disease X, an unknown respiratory pathogen. How quickly could we respond? The reality is that for most countries, there's no regional mechanism that could manufacture and distribute vaccines in a meaningful time frame. Just think about that for a moment. I want you to think of the example of the Ebola. You're probably all familiar with the Ebola outbreak in 2014. This shows the timelines of the outbreak and the time that it took to get a traditional manufactured vaccine into play. You can see that it was too low and you really need to make the required response a matter of weeks. Critically, modeling of that disease X, that unknown pathogen, says that for every month's delay, there'd be up to five million deaths. That's the equivalent of taking out a city the size of Rome or Singapore every month. But importantly, it's developing countries that will bear the biggest burden, accounting for up to 80% of deaths. Now, you can imagine if we made a globally effective vaccine, they would probably be last in line for that vaccine. So if you don't want to make, wait in line for the vaccine, you need a distributed solution. Even if we solve the manufacturing and approval timelines, a single manufacturing site is unlikely to make that just-in-time commitment to make a vaccine globally available. So we need a completely different model. Think about coffee, something you're all familiar with. Go into the same chain anywhere in the world, you get the same consistent product. But for example, it's not all been brewed and shipped from Seattle around the world. It's been made locally to define specifications. So can vaccines work in that way? One part of the solution is RNA vaccines because they can be made by a fully synthetic process without requiring culture of cells or infectious material. Most importantly, they can be made in a matter of weeks, a concept that we're exploring with CEPI, this partnership for preventing outbreaks. Now, RNA vaccines work by identifying the coat surface of a pathogen, encoding it in the synthesized RNA, and then that's injected into your muscle, and the muscle makes the vaccine. So imagine your muscle becomes the factory that makes the vaccine that triggers your immune system to make protective white cells and antibodies. Now, this technology offers four important advantages. First, rapid response. Then you can include multiple vaccines in the same technology, even within the same shot. It has a low infrastructure cost and a low manufacturing footprint. So it's ideal for a distributed manufacturing network. Imagine a process that's really very reproducible. Essentially, it's synthesized RNA, which is code, made out of the same building blocks, whether it's a vaccine against Ebola or Zika virus. This technology is not completely new. It's already being used successfully in the cancer field. So what we want to do is ensure that it can be used for outbreaks and pandemics. So now instead of having a very complicated manufacturing site that ships things around the world, it allows us to envisage developing modular vaccine production units that are networked together. Something that we are prototyping in the future vaccine manufacturing research hub that I lead at Imperial College. Now, if this is such a great idea, why hasn't it been done before? Why isn't pharma doing it? Well, first of all, it would be very disruptive to traditional business models. And second, responding to outbreaks is not seen as commercially attractive. So we need to completely reimagine the way we make vaccines for these outbreaks and pandemics. So how would it work in practice? You'd have a network of production units, and in the event of an outbreak, they'd all focus their response on making a vaccine against that pathogen. At other times, they'd be free to manufacture vaccines that are relevant to their regional location. Now, the benefits are really real because everybody then becomes invested in the process. The vaccine would be standardized globally, but manufactured locally. So instead of countries waiting in line for the vaccine, they'd be empowered to make it themselves and provide protection for their own citizens. So what do we need to make this actually a reality? Well, first of all, we need an international partnership, a not-for-profit franchise, and a mechanism for rapid approval. 
but most importantly, we would need a global commitment to support and fund this vision. Thank you very much. Thank you.